Hello again, everyone. Melth here, with more of my Baldur's Gate 3 challenge run. Full details of the challenge in the YouTube video description. The summary is that I'll be not long resting, not using healing potions in my party, and trying to tackle every encounter with combat and do so with the hardest grouping of enemies that's possible for that encounter. Watch out for spoilers throughout this run. So, last time we killed off Kaga. This time we can talk to her and find out if she really was as she presented herself. This guy says she'll talk to us. I think we've seen this animation enough times. The courts regard you like the slave. Complete the right of thorns. So they knew about a coming danger, basically. They don't really know the details, but you know, the Mind Flayer absolute army they kind of know about. And they have a poorly thought through plan to protect themselves from it. Drawing a vine over your grove is not going to do a darn thing when a Mind Flayer army that can teleport and plane shift comes knocking. So she just it was a short sighted extremist, basically. So that, to Bolas, suggests that the corruption here probably runs pretty deep. Other people might be implicated. So he's going to now go on the search to see if anyone else is in the league with these Shadow Droids. This item, some people really like it. It can be good to give you free poison coatings, basically. If you have maybe a healing potion that you throw at your party members to get a bunch of people to get healed and so forth. But I can't do that in this run, so for me it's really not going to be very good. I think Oladun has slightly better treasure, but not really much. They're armed like beggars, these shadow druids. What's in here? I was trying to loot Loic. Nothing. Wow. My savior. He'll have this dialogue no matter when you talk to him after rescuing him, basically. Not just after he's surrounded by the bodies of all his colleagues. What's up for discussion? I hope to see Halsen return so he can help us heal. Please, if you find him... Okay, so, in character, the reason we're going to be scouring this room is to try to search for evidence of who else might be involved with the Shadow Druids. Out of character, we're just looting the room, basically, now that it's no longer guarded by Marco Rill all the time. What path lies before me? There are the tenants that said they had to take in people who did help, basically. I don't think there's really much in here other than just books that I plan to sell, so I might skim over it. Oh, I'm encumbered. Let me pass some items to my other party members who have hundreds and hundreds of pounds of carry weight to spare. I've mentioned you really should never, ever have a problem with carry weight in this game. You have so much to spare. Uh, one important thing. I recently found out the sparkle hands here are better than I thought. See, I thought they only gave you a set of lightning charges if you used an unarmed strike, as they say. But it turns out it also works if you do a throw attack. And we have someone who does a lot of that, so there you go. Good time to do some alchemy to offload a bit of weight, too. Extracting ingredients and making some potions should lighten the load a bit. So there's four main categories of stuff you can make. What I really want is more oil of accuracy. I'm out of that now, and I need as much as I can get. Especially in these early levels, it's really good. Bloodless Elixir is also very good, of course. This one is so-so. And that's really all that's worth making right now. Let's save the rest of the ingredients. Okay, back to distributing the load a bit better. This reminds me. I think I was going to give the Woodwode Shield maybe to Carlac. Alright, we should be good. Gond is one of the gnome inventor gods. Every race, which there are too many of in this setting, has their own pantheon of way too many gods, many of which are totally redundant with each other. 
Grove Artifacts sounds cooler than it is. It's actually just a list of one thing, essentially, saying that the Idol of Sylvanas is special. And Kaga found out that it's more special than she knew. The Idol is pretty interesting in that it has a cool effect that gives you an aura that grants party members a skill while they're in the aura. I don't think anything else in the game works like that. It's pretty neat. Two skills, actually. The problem is just that they are, like, terrible skills. So it can be worth taking just to free up two entire skill slots, basically, on your main character. But there's a downside, too, which is that it just kind of clutters up your combat log with endless This person got this aura! This person lost that aura! Which multiplies to, like, infinity as you get more summons later on. So, there are some downsides. Let's talk to these druids, so we'll be kind of mix up whether we did the right thing or not. I think Marco Rill is like the only one who, even when you bring back Halson, is still about how they should have done the Rite of Thorums and broken all their teachings and whatnot. Most of the other ones eventually see the light, as it were. We almost finished the ritual. I felt honored when I was chosen to participate. Now I feel guilty. I didn't object. Well, like Wrath, good. Maybe you'll learn to speak up next time. Rather than just being bullied in submission by Kaga, simply because she's the highest level. To us. Uh, oh, there we us. She was a blight on the grove. I was thinking it wasn't going to show his face. You were right to put her down. There's the smug guy. The right of thorns has ceased. It seems you will be allowed to stay, but behave. Of course, I'll behave. Oh, they also let some tieflings in here now that they're not doing the ritual anymore. Well. I'm going to behave, but this random halfling that we just met might not. I think his spell slots are probably the least useful, so... Go ahead and throw out a fog club there and steal that idol as we promised Maul we would. Well, I don't know who that halfling is. Didn't see anything happen, it was all covered by a fog cloud. As I've mentioned before, it is really important to do things in the right order for this quest. Otherwise, you either get no reward, or you cause a massacre and all the teethlings get killed, pretty much. You must, as far as I'm going to do it, something like this. Number one, befriend Maul in some way. The easiest way is just to save Arabella. Talk to Maul, get the quest to steal the idol. Do not steal it yet. Do the Kaga quest to expose her as a shadow druid. Once you've done that, then steal the idol, then hand it in over here. And only after that can you go deal with the goblins. If you deal with the goblins prematurely, then you'll miss out on the entire reward. It's pretty complicated. Thanks. See you in Baldur's Gate, I hope. Now scram. Before I get emotional. She gives a really good reward. There are a lot of very powerful magic items in this game, but weirdly enough, there are almost no good rings. So this one that just gives plus one armor class, plus one to all saving throws, is pretty darn good, actually. And if you miss out on that, you're kind of behind for the rest of the run. Let's put it on Ballista. It's good to have the front man have good saving throws, and he also has some of the worst armor class in the party currently. That reminds me, I was going to give you back your shield. There we go. That's better. And you know what, Astarian, how about we take off the disguise of that wanted halfling? I'll take off my own disguise too to see if there's any good stuff I can buy from Maul before we move on. Arrows of Darkness are even better than I realized, so I'm going to buy that one. That is an expensive and pretty useless arrow, so I'll pass on that. Does she have anything else that's good? Doesn't really look like it currently. Anything oh, I forgot to actually buy it. I could, of course, sell a bunch of stuff, but I kind of want to avoid that until I hit character level 5, at which point my prices will be much, much better. So I want to try to minimize big purchases and big sales until that point. All right, let's see what the other shopkeepers have and then get on with the adventure. Arrows of fire are cheap and pretty good. I might just buy out his stock here and maybe that arrow of protection. Arrows of acid you'd think are good, but they never actually work the way they're supposed to as far as I can tell. When enemies use them on me, they cause me to have lowered armor. When I use them on enemies, they never have that effect whatsoever, unless the enemy then later moves while staying in that same puddle of acid. I don't know what it is. If anyone else has a solution to that, I'd be happy to hear it. But for me, they should be good arrows, but they just aren't. Which bull? Terrible spell. 
Air War of Darkness, I guess we want that. Arrows of Fire, I guess we'll stock up. Ace arrows are comparatively rare. I might buy those too. Just some things are resistant to fire and weak to ice or whatever. I should probably refrain on too many more port purchases though. It'll be time to come back and buy lots of magic arrows later on in the game. Alright, so let us go and rescue Murkon from the beach. Oh, first we've got to deal with this guy. He can show up in a number of places. My, my, what manner of place is this? A path to redemption? Or a road to damnation? Hard to say for your journey. Probably both for different characters. What would suit the occasion? Hmm. The words to a lullaby, perhaps. The mouse smiled brightly. It outfoxed the cat. Then down came the claw. And that, love, was that. I do feel like it didn't deliver that line very well, but... Know how to write them in Cormor is a kingdom to the south of here, I believe. One of the human kingdoms. Our location is pretty vague. It's hard to say exactly where they would be in relation to us. But one of the human kingdoms of the Western Lands. Very much at your service. It's not every day one meets such a... This must be a darker response here. A true bloody pleasure. You wound... I really wish I could upgrade from the goblin to this guy. He's slick and oily and obnoxious, but he's better than the goblin. Shall we withdraw? We have much to discuss. To our mutual satisfaction. This quaint little scene... I like the idea of this scene, I think, but... I feel like, as far as a role-playing game handling of it goes, it's not great in that your choices really don't matter. It's all just kind of very railroady. And first of all, you obviously can't reject this, but even once you show up here, what you say to him just doesn't matter. You can't accept his terrible deal that he offers you, you can't meaningfully reject it either. You can't attack him, which would be suicide. But you, you just can't do anything. Nothing you say or do matters. You might at first think that you're making choices, but it's an illusion. There's his boss battle music. It's pretty good touch. This is kind of a setup. We'll find out later on that Hope is an actual person who lives in this house, so it's very literal. I don't know if there's that much lore to her besides that. At least I don't find much. But it's an interesting setup at least. Your supper. After all, it might just be your last. Well, I don't think Ballista would actually eat any food that the devil offers to him. And as much as he could be theatrical himself being a bard, he doesn't like it from other people. <laughs> Are you not entertained? Well, far be it from me to disappoint. Are we really that surprised, Ballista? Than a devil you don't know. <laughs> I do like this play in that common idiom. Fuck. You know, most of the devils that we fight in this game for some reason are Cambians, which is odd because they're like the lowest of devils. Other devils despise them for being half mortal. At least that used to be their lore. I guess he's half serious devil and half some mortal race, but <laughs> that silly pose. I enjoy just leaving him hanging there doing that and just not bothering to respond as he clearly thinks he's impressed us. Let me talk a bit about Cambians in, you know, what people thought about them in real mythology, essentially. So the word, of course, comes from the Latin word, you know, for to change. Notice similar words in many Latin drive languages like Spanish, cambiar, and so forth, to change. So originally they refer to things more like what we might call changelings in fairy tales and so forth. You know, the fairies would replace a human baby with one of their own children. Not really a demon, just kind of a, a fey spirit type thing. But over time, as a new Christian mindset of demons and angels and so forth began to replace the older folk tales, that sort of began to change. And so fairies began to be associated with demons in many different versions of the stories. And eventually changelings began to be referred to as basically being demons. But then there was another wrinkle thrown into things too, because... Somehow or other, medieval Catholics made up this notion that there were particular types of demons called like succubi and incubi. 
No idea where they got it from. This whole elaborate new mythos about them. No, as far as I'm aware, like previous Roman basis for them. Certainly no scriptural basis for them. But they started making up these elaborate theological justifications for how these things could exist and how they must reproduce, but they couldn't possibly reproduce with each other, so they must be stealing human semen to make changeling babies called campions. So that's where all this stuff kind of developed. So that's a history of what the word campion would have meant in European folklore and mythology before it being the use to refer to these half fiend things in D&D. Let's get back to what we're talking about here. Because my compassion is boundless, I stride among the needy, giving comfort where I can. And you're in... I think there's a little bit of an eye roller from Ballas, so which was One nice. Shall, two tenants, and no solution in sight. We've got like five solutions in sight, they're just got a kind of low probability. That, I don't think, is true. As far as I'm aware, he still actually has no solution other than, like, a vague plan that you could get this artifact from him, free Orpheus, and hope that Orpheus has a solution. Yes. You can't accept the deal. If you try to accept it, he just, you know, ignores you and says he'd rather you come back begging later on. Too smug for his own good. Try to cure yourself. Shop around. Beg. Borrow. And But, anyway... Exhaust. There's no intelligent reason to have a character take his deal as he presents it, like giving up your soul for him to fix his Mind Flayer Parasite problem. So, in lore, Mind Flayers don't hurt your souls until this game. This game says they destroy your soul somehow or other. But even that is better than your soul being tortured for eternity in hell and being used to, like, be a power source for cosmic evil and whatnot. Let alone that you could just, like, kill yourself before you turn into a Mind Flayer and that would also solve the problem completely and your soul would go off to whatever heaven you've earned in the setting where heavens are verifiably real. And easy to come back from with resurrect scrolls anyway. So it's just like there's no possible upside. It's all downside, and the character would have to be really dumb to take his deal as it's presented. By all means, bite the hand that feeds you while you still have teeth. All those I'd also point out we saw Mind Flayers eating you know devil brains at the beginning of the game. The devils also have a lot to lose from Mind Flayers taking over. When the Mind Flayers had their empire in the future, it ruled over everything except for parts of the Abyss that had already eaten all the devils. So, these guys should be careful, too. Be there when it runs out. All right. Let's get back in disguise. You know, maybe we'll talk to the characters about what just happened, actually. Can't believe that devil just took us into the hells with a snuff. Yeah, I also don't know how he did that. If I see him again, I'll ring his Just kind of a plot device. My engine stopped fuming for one. But even without that, I could just feel it. Raphael was his name, right? It is a weird name. Raphael was the name of an archangel in he knows we can't win. I'm not Abrahamic saying. mythology. Glad you're not either. This seems like a good time to ask this question. It's always been available, but on the type. this just feels appropriate. Ice devils hate an inferno, but that's an easy one. Orthons love projectiles. We'll meet an Orthon in this game. Most devils we fight are either like imps or cambians, but we will meet like one Orthon. Demons, on the other hand. Every demon is absolutely singular. You can't ever they always will say this kind of thing. It's never really true mechanically. Like, they always say that you know demons are just wild and chaotic and varied in their forms and don't plan things. But there's always, in every single edition, just been demons that are as smart as devils, as planny as devils, and are standardizing their types as devils. Just kind of a major disconnect between lore and gameplay that's always been around pretty much. So many options. It's not that I want to collect them, per se. It's just that if we should happen upon them, I can use them in battle to fire up my engine. Evil For me in this run, this won't really help. Put to good use. Sometimes. Maybe. I don't think I've got that dialogue from her before. That's certainly how Belissa feels about Lei Boing Zell and Astarian, though. They're evil being put to good use. <laughs> now there's a bloody devil trailing after us. Well, this gets better and better. Shop around, he said. 
And he might be right. We've had no luck so far. Maybe. But all that take your time, I'll wait nonsense. He's playing with us. A story in Black should show that he's quite my old eager to make a deal with the devil, which is foolish. But then think there was hope right until the end, until he snatched it all away. But a story, of course, is just kind of a dummy. So don't play games unless they know they can win. They can win, not that they will win. We keep hunting for answers. This is no ordinary mind player parasite. This is like the most lucid and cogent argument that a starting will make of anything in the whole game that I can think of. Important enough that a devil comes knocking on our door. Five minutes from now, I'll be talking about how he wants to just like make a deal with the devil and sell his soul. So. This devil, Raphael, flaunts his paltry way. That is an ugly looking helmet. We've got to get you a better one. You saw the red dragon slaying his infernal We slew the three of them ourselves. It was pretty epic. Next to a dragon, the devil's a gnat. When I am Kithrak, I will take my queen Vlakith his head as a trophy. Don't you know that you guys made deals with devils to get dragons on your side to begin with? I will sit astride one. It is only a matter of time. I will ride a red dragon. I will wield the silver sword, and I will conquer. Silver swords are these Yankee swords that used to cut the uh, threads of souls in the astral plane because they're cowardly and don't feel like actually fighting. If you cut the thread of the silver silver cord of an astral plane traveler, they just instantly die. I wanted to talk to Shadowheart about something. Come to think of it, I'll go try that. I don't think I ever got her dialogue about how the artifact popped up. There'll be any more trouble between Nazelle and I, if you were wondering. We can all sleep easier now. Well, <laughs> apart from all the rest. You have an interesting definition of friendly, but yes. I know. I don't understand how exactly. But I felt it go to you. It's important. Keep it close. I don't really get, other than plot convenience, of course, how it is that it couldn't protect us while it was here in camp, but it was able to still protect her in camp while it was with us. Just whatever the narration needs it to be. I suppose if we're going to keep helping each other, I might as well tell you. I was part of a group sent to retrieve it. Bring it to Baldur's Gate for our goddess. I worship Sha, the mistress of the night. And this is a shock to Ballista. Up until this point, he thought that she was the most sane, normal, and trustworthy member of her party, except for maybe Gale, who's clearly lying about something. Now that you have the truth, please don't but she worships possibly the worst goddess in all of the universe. The one who wants to destroy not just the entire world, but the entire universe. Kill everyone and everything and damn them to like eternal torture, basically, in this soul draining void so i don't think he's going to be upfront about this but he is definitely feeling that forever ideally and you assume too much about what i can and cannot tell secrecy is everything but you shall. could indeed tell as it, it turns our out code, so our creed our shield but she's pointing out that she'll probably want to keep other secrets, too. Secrets and she wants to take the artifact to this evil goddess, which would presumably doom us or something like that. So at this point, Valissa is thinking that she might actually be his greatest enemy. Once I prove myself, my memories will be restored. I'm not sorry I kept this from you. Not one bit. So much for her discretion. That might change, if you can show an open mind. All right. As I said, Shah is my patron, my mistress, goddess of darkness and loss. I assume you've heard of her? This is a very neutral way to phrase it, but she'll respond with hostility. Uh, if that troubles you, perhaps you should fetch the bailiff to arrest me. Ah, 
What? Well, there totally is like a bailiff. I mean, right in the middle of a druid grove here. I'm close enough to a bailiff anyway. They have a jail. But I'll happily go it alone. My faith will keep me company. So, as far as Ballista is concerned, she is an enemy. Probably the worst member of the party. Astarian and Le Boingzell just want to murder people. She wants to destroy the entire world, or at least worships a goddess who wants to do that. And she's quite unabashed about it, and will be working against it sooner or later to take the artifact away. But unlike her, he has actual discretion in what reveal his thoughts about. Okay, so I guess we can talk to animals, but Magrant isn't talking. He actually just is yelling roar. Most of what's going on there. Anyway, we're off to save Murkon from this harpy-infested beach right next to Druid Town. But Druids apparently don't do anything about that. Harpies aren't part of nature. They're monstrosities, not yeah, animals. There's a treasure to grow a tree. Let's take care of that first. Well, I think as a magic-wielding bard, Balosa is quite suspicious of magic music. We've already seen that used against poor squirrels here, so he suspects the worst immediately. And the reason I'm here now, basically just that I can do this now with a high likelihood of saving work on, I could win the fight pretty easily at level 3, but there'd be a high chance of a harpy being on the list to just instant kill him if it chose to do so. So I just would not have enough DPS, or, you know, DPR, I guess would be more accurate, to take out enough of them. That's a pretty lame treasure. You can jump over there, but as far as I can tell, there's nothing to find. So, back I go. Well, when we're in danger, we want to seek, I think, the highest ground and survey from up there. So that would be over hereabouts, I believe. We also have an invisible familiar to help with things. So if you have a non-invisible character come over here, you can reveal the harpies that way. Or if you go down to the beach, you can reveal them if you talk to Murkon, but then you have a person who's down on the beach, which I really don't want. The person down on the beach is vulnerable. So I'll send Shovel over this way. Climb up there and turn invisible again. That'll be in a good position for her to maybe help take out an injured harpy later on. Harpy's kind of cheating to not be present now while it's actually in that position singing, in my opinion. Okay, so it's not showing up yet. That's kind of as expected. Let me perhaps cast Resistance on you so if you do get affected by saving throw song, you're more likely to succeed. And then get moving. And at some point down here, I think the Harpy will show up. Don't know how far I'll have to go. Never wanted the easy path. Guess I'll need to go all the way, it seems. Okay. Usually if you have the guy there, the uh, familiar that is, you won't need to go all the way, but apparently that's not happening this time. I'm going to train base mode here so it doesn't run out of further buff time. I want long jumper so I can get back up to safety. Don't you hear it? It's so peaceful. No, no. It's just a bit of water. I only want to listen. These pupils are purple because of magic, by the way, in case that wasn't clear. They'll change color later on. These harpies kind of mix together the idea of the harpy and the siren from Greek mythology, of course. Sirens are the ones who lure people in with songs and then tore them apart and ate them. It also had bird wings, but then just kind of being ugly, hideous birds rather than pretty is, I guess, a harpy thing. Nothing will stand in my way. Okay, so it's trying to use luring song. I need to damage it so as to free... 
Murkon from it. So if I throw something at it, that is a high likelihood, I think, of just breaking it out of its song. Let's try that. Should do pretty good damage from just being thrown from that high up. Nice! That was some good damage. Alright. I want a starting to kill one of them so I get an extra action. Maybe I should have Karlak throw her javelin or whatever next and see how much progress I make with that one. Perhaps it's this one down there. Because ideally I have a star and shoot with like, you know, 14 damage for guaranteed kill rather than like 4 damage turning off his sharpshooter. Let's get down there see if we can get better damage that way. Or better accuracy, I mean, that way. There we go, that's pretty good. Okay, so that gave him an extra action and invisibility. I like to hear that. Alright, so we move a little bit closer, we won't have that penalty. Yeah, it's lagging because I have a high view here and I can't do much about that. We've got to get a little bit closer. Very, oops, very well. 96% to hit. I like those odds. I think I also like the odds of having Shovel here come up and maybe attack it from behind. That'll almost certainly kill. And it'll also distract a harvest so it won't go after something more important like Murkon. Worst comes to worst, like... Shovel dies. Ah, missed! Come on. That was highly improbable. Can't quite get down there. That's a shame. Well, so much for peace. What are your odds of killing if you shoot like that? They're pretty good, actually. I think we'll try it. Oh, he had to run closer than I realized, but... Still, that's pretty good. Decent odds to kill that target. I think we might as well go for it. No? Okay, I mean, that wasn't too surprising. I said decent odds, not great odds. Is that close enough? No? Okay, I guess we'll take what we can get. I do still have some actions left. I don't think you... If a starting can't get close enough, you probably can't either. So we'll have to take that. There we go. Got that little blue number there that's lightning damage because I used a throw attack before with those sparkle hands. So thank you to one of the commenters for pointing out that those things actually work for that type of damage. Okay. I think now we are almost guaranteed for starting to take it out if he turns off sharpshooter. 90%? I'll take it. There we go. I think that was a pretty well executed version of that fight. Are they gone? No damage taken, no resources really expended. No. Yes. I mean, I don't know. Th that's what the voice said. I almost got to the nest, but the singing. I need to get back. Maul will be so mad. Maul took him in because he's like an orphan, but Maul is sending him on these suicide missions what is a known harpy's nest, so gravely irresponsible. And she really won't care that much. Like, if you hadn't already befriended her, I guess it'll befriend her, same as helping Arabella. But Maul is just pretty bad. She'll make a show care about the kids, but it's pretty evident she really doesn't. Oh, you know, let me have maybe Karlak retrieve some of these items on the way, just because Karlak's already closer to them. Grab that, and then grab that spear. The Harpies don't really have much of anything, as I recollect. You know, no alchemy ingredient or anything like that. It's odd. You might think they would maybe have something that would give you like a charm effect or a sleep effect. There are poisons that cause sleep. I don't think there's one for charm, but still. You'd expect something like that, but there just isn't one for them. Most other critters in the game have some kind of alchemy ingredient. Can't give up now. I meant to group all. Okay. You know, I don't care how many pockets you have, Bola, so you're probably not fitting javelins in them. What's hiding here? This beach, for me, has always been a little bit laggy. I think because it's the high views and lots of the water effects, but... Alright, 
Let's get over here and loot some more treasures along the beach, and then get out of here. Merkin will write a cute little story about us, if we can check that out later on. For now, there's not too much to be gained from that, so we'll probably just move on with our adventure and return later. Over here, there'll be a chest to retrieve. You know what? I might, to save time, have just Leibwung Zell go and get it. Because it's going to be dependent on um, Super Jump to retrieve. Well, or just having really good strength, but I'll probably use Super Jump. Or not. Okay. So, Harpy Nest has a magic ring in it, which is not that good. It gives you Color Spray, which is a pretty bad spell in this edition. I will say... Yeah, pretty much every edition has had some kind of absolutely busted, game-breaking first-level spell for wizards and whatnot. In 3.5, it was Color Spray. In 5th edition, it's Back to Sleep, which is the other classic. One of those is usually broken in every edition, and just trivializes the game at low levels. And then there's two notes here. These two notes basically relate to one of the Tomb of Horror spin-off adventures that happened. I don't really pay attention to those. I hated the original Tomb of Horrors. I think it's just like a masterpiece of terrible adventure design. Luck-based rather than strategic at every turn. Then this dreadles them going kind of crazy in the subsequent Tomb Adventure. I guess I might as well read it since I'm talking about it. Anyway, there have been many, many spin-offs of that very famous adventure, despite it not being a good one. If you're a devil's face, mouth agape. That's a thing from Tomb of Horrors where there was a sphere of annihilation. I have a lot on my mind. And well, in it. Okay. Yeah, I guess we can report success to Zevlo before we leave. So I might as well do that to get a bit of XP. I'll probably just skim through walking back off this beach with no opposition. Here we are in the lair again. Murkham will give us a reward of him having written up a cute little story about how we saved him. I don't know why I ran over there to talk to him. The game's pathing toward the picking up things or talking to people is pretty weird sometimes. One time, someone in one of my writing classes wrote a story about me. I was very surprised. It cast me as kind of a hard-boiled, straight-laced police officer in some kind of buddy cop type action story. Came out of nowhere. He can spell adventurer pretty well. Maul, like other random children, will be fascinated with your bird familiars and so forth. I had a feeling you'd be back. I assume that's just kind of design Thank oversight God, rather than actually her having a childlike personality in that way. Gotta say, I'm impressed. I gotta say, you're irresponsible sending kids into Harpy's nests. You want to talk? Talk. We're saving up for a better hideout when we get to Boulder's Gate. Why? You planning on telling me stealing is wrong? I'm planning on telling you that you're sending fellow kids to their deaths with these dumb ideas. There's no good response to that. But maybe this will keep them from doing that if I give them money so they stop to let them into the like, scrounge for pocket change in harpy pockets. You won't turn down free money. I've got operating costs you wouldn't believe. Sounds like you're not a very good businesswoman. Come see me in the city sometime, huh? I'll repay this and then some. See you around. Okay. Well. Let's go report Kaga's death to Zevlor, and then be on our way. So, here is Zevlor. I'm told the druids have stopped their damn chanting. What happened? Truly. I'm sorry it had to come to this. But she left us with no choice. Thank you. We still have the goblins to contend with. But no matter how much prep time they have, they will still get killed if there's even, like, a single goblin leader left. Do they really deserve to live if just the... 
one hobgoblin can apparently solo their entire group. What you've done for us, and I'm afraid I have more yet to ask. You've bought us some time here, but the goblins are still massing out there. We'd need an army of our own to escort us safely to Baldur's Gate. And while I don't doubt your ability... I do kind of wish we had the options just to escort them and keep them from going off and blundering into the Shadow Curse themselves in the dumbest way after all the work done to save them, but oh well. Goblins are ill-disciplined. It's unlike them to organize so cleverly. This is a classic D&D &D lore thing. Goblins are just cowardly, incompetent, chaotic, and can only be held in line by bullying, usually by a hobgoblin. And they'll scatter. It's no small thing to ask, but I've seen you fight. You're equal to the task. We sure are. We could definitely do that now. It would be an okay choice to do. Everyone in this camp Astarian disproves that he likes violence only when it's hurting innocents, basically. He hates violence that might actually help somebody, because he's just awful. We've got a good chunk of XP. I want to try to get to level 5 before doing some of the really tricky fights. Uh, Hellrider's Pride. Zephyr so is one of the Hellriders, which were kind of this elite cavalry force from Elturel. Long before the recent fall of Elturel. Nothing to do with that in particular, really. But it only really works if you heal people, which on this run I'm going to do very, very little of. So I probably just want to sell that. So... We could go deal with the goblins, we could do any number of different things, but I think right now that Spalissa is not feeling confident Halston can help us. What he is thinking about is in the Blighted Village we found the Necromancy of Thay book, written by a necromancer who'd been trying things like True Resurrection, knew how to do it and so forth. And he thought this book had even a higher, more powerful magic in it. True Resurrect would already be a perfect solution to our problems, because you can just resurrect somebody even without their body perfectly, with everything that's wrong with them fixed, that would definitely include a Mind Flayer Parasite. So any kind of book that's better than that would be a perfect solution, basically, is what he's thinking right now. And we know that the gem that opened the book was stolen and taken down into this well. There are better ways to get down into that spider-infested area, but I think roleplay-wise would probably be going here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not sure this is a great idea out of character, because we have to fight a boss down there, and I'm not sure we're well-equipped for that. But we'll do our best. Bosses are going to be quite formidable here on Legendary, with all the new... Super actions. I also, out of character, want to get down to the Underdark, and this is one of the least guarded ways to do that. I could befriend the Zendrum up in the north, but I feel like that'd be a bad role plan to go off and do that right now. So, this is one of the more convenient ways into the Underdark, which is where the next big set of power ups I should be trying to harvest is located. So, that's why I want to do this. Plus, the Necromancy of Thay book itself gives a nice little bonus that I want to collect. Somehow, even the places they aren't connected to. Just out of view. Turn yourself invisible, and you sneak, and you sneak. How this well ever operate with the giant cave system like this, full of spiders and whatnot? I have no idea. Now, I don't love this entrance to this area simply because it's low ground, and that's. Not great with enemies of range attacks, so I want to sneak over to high ground ASAP and start a fight from there. I'd rather attack from the other side where we can divide and conquer the enemies better, but I'm trying to roleplay here, so I'm coming from this side. Hurry up, guys. So there's two types of enemies over there. There's the phase spiders, and there's the edder caps. Now, I think edder caps are these... Actually, I know. Edder caps are these aberration creatures that have been around since early editions that work with spiders and keep them as pets and whatnot and are good at throwing nets. Their exact power changes edition by edition. I think they might derive the name from the old word adder cop for spider, which you might remember if you've read the Hobbit book. In Bilbo's song Making Fun of the Spiders, he calls them adder cop, and Tolkien makes a joke about how no one likes being called adder cop, basically. Or all spiders hate being called adder cop. Just kind of Tolkien joking around with obscure words, pretty much. Okay, even in Termis, but they're still walking because they're too far away. But the spider is the main target. The edder cap is much less important. So I want to wait for that thing to come in range and then attack it. You can take me on. Oh, it didn't see me? Uh, I don't want it to take free hits here. I want it to just break stealth. There we go. 
Okay. Let's turn back on Sharpshooter. Take our Sharpshooter shot. Okay, disadvantage, but we'll fire from here because we should. This should be happening fast. There we go. Let's get everyone else out of stealth. And get in on the battle. Okay. The others phase better. Do we have any way to target it? As their name suggests, they can teleport, phasing around. And they have a powerful splash range attack. Moderately powerful, anyway. So I want to get him out of there if he can't fight anymore, basically. You've got... He did not get an extra action for that kill. That's unfortunate. But it's okay. Is there any way that you can... Come on, click. Any way that you can target that guy. Oddly enough, yes. Let's go for it. We're unlikely to get the kill. Oh no, it is path interrupted. It's almost there. So it might be possible to walk a little bit to this side, maybe? Maybe. Okay, if I get the birds out of the way, perhaps. Hungry for the slaughter. Path is no, it's not going to let me. Unfortunate. I would have loved to take that thing out. Ah, critical miss ruining that. Okay. Yeah, this is a pretty poor start to the fight, but the Edder Caps are not a big threat. They can throw webs that entangle you in a big area, but that's not a big deal compared to taking splash damage in this run. This is just, like, awful positioning, isn't it? That's why, again, I love to come from the other side. You know, breaking in from the Blacksmith's Workshop, I just couldn't really just fight in character. Because we don't have a reason in character to think anywhere other than here has the gem. So the face better can probably teleport up here and attack us. Okay, good. She's able to dodge at least, so that's good. They do have to make an attack roll for that. So, against our good armor class and them having low ground, we had a decent chance of success. We could burn these webs to drop them. I want to say, by the way, it's commonly a video game thing since at least Ocarina of Time that webs are really, really flammable. As far as I'm aware, it's not true. Spider webs don't really ignite. They will melt, if anything. But, oh well. Never had it lag like this in here. Oh well, it's going fine. Maybe if I stop complaining about the lag, it'll just go away. It's been good enough to play and have fun. I'd love to fix it, but I've tried everything that I can think of and it just isn't working. Alright, the Edder Cap might have to dash to us. I think it probably will. So that's great. Again, the Edder Caps only have a throw net attack. They don't have a ranged attack and they can't teleport, so they are much less of a threat than the phase spiders. And that's why I wanted to focus on the spiders first. I don't think I'll even need to send this guy into danger to blind one of the other caps. They're just not really that important. Can you feel death's cold? Okay. Let's see if I can earn you an extra attack by killing that guy. Nice. Now you're invisible. I can probably take that one down. Or at least do severe damage to it. Yeah, that'll do. Should be possible now to finish them off. That Edder Cap can probably get to me, and I don't think I can do that much about it. Unless the AI knows of a path. Yeah, I can't, can't really get to it. So I'll just focus on taking out that one. And the others maybe can hide so they can perhaps ambush him when he shows up. Oh, is it not going to work? Come on. There we go. Sometimes the AI is smart about who it can and can't target. Sometimes it's very, very dumb. No? Okay, fine. We'll just wait for him to come back in range, and then we'll toast him. It's not a big deal. Oh, it's a polished dagger. Maybe I'll just throw the spear instead.
could have the bird blind him, but I think I'll just keep it simple. So we're going to walk on a lot of webs and get entangled a lot of times here. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to press on and just grab things and move along. I think that's more efficient than trying to pick out a clean path in this place. All these pulses will go indicate that you've alerted them, but that doesn't matter. I guess they've been feasting on goblins. There are various egg sacks, not egg sacks, um, cocoons that we can loot to find various minor treasures. I'll do some of that. I don't think there's something that's really worth like searching for thoroughly, Something but I'll grab the things that are obvious at least. Torch is going to be good for... Uh, if we want to burn some webs, I guess, but we have so many ways to do that, I don't think we need it. This, I think, is what's left of the Apprentice. Pretty well armored for a Wizard's Apprentice, but... Does the rest of the blade do anything special? I don't think so. But I guess he went down here and got eaten by spiders or whatever. Which is kind of weird that they would be down here. I don't know how this town survived with so many different types of monsters all just jam-packed into it. Their web full of evil poisonous spiders. So again, he was sworn to his master... We saw from his healing journal, he hates making healing potions and so forth, so. Oaths were, of course, a big deal in ancient and medieval times and whatnot, so I like that they usually treat them with respect in this game. It feels culturally appropriate. Again, I'm surprised Dr. Sisters were able to kill a super high-level wizard, but... I also don't know why he secured the Kijim over here in the first place. Because he wasn't planning to betray his master, as far as I'm aware. Might be useful. Like, I get why he would steal the tome to get himself back into the Lich's, and F Lich's favor in Fey, but I don't get why he would have taken the gem in the first place. Unless he was planning to leave, but that seems to go against what we're told by him. Feeling the need to uphold his oath, basically. Do watch out, by the way, these guys drop a poison puddle when they die. I oh, don't want to walk into that and take damage. Nothing in that one? Very well. Let's move on to the real treasure room in here. Need to get my bearings and figure out where it is again. Uh, is it... No. Not that way, I don't think. I think that's the direction that usually would come from. With its one bridge, it's easy to hold against them. Usually fight the other caps first there, and then the spiders come along later, and... It works out pretty well. I'd say it's, it's a better approach than this one. I just was, again, trying to roleplay here, and doing things in a way that fit what the characters knew. Is this it? No. I'm getting mixed up again. That's the boss room. I know the boss room is overlooked by the treasure room over on, I think, this side, maybe? There we go. Okay. I am concerned about this boss, because she can dish out massive damage and pretty easily kill a party member per round once she gets going. Uh, so it could definitely ruin this run if I'm not very careful. I have an idea about how I would tackle things normally, but in honor mode they've disallowed many of the things that used to work against her, like she can no longer push into bits. Which wouldn't be my first choice anyway, but they disallowed it. So I can't use that as a failsafe. I don't love just flat out disallowing something like that. I feel like they should have made it harder, but not impossible. So 
this is written by basically a mad high elf who was captured by Drow, became obsessed with spiders and Lolth, and then found a way to transform herself into a giant spider. So then, that's kind of the background of this whole place, I guess. How she came to be under this particular town, I'm not sure I understand that. You know, I really just kind of expect better from High Elves, to be honest. Now we're talking. This is a great item for dealing with these spiders. It's, like, limited for the addition of this one fight, but it's really great for this. Just makes you immune to webs, able to walk in them without alerting spiders. So, that's what we want. Actually, it doesn't stop you from alerting them, it just makes you immune to being enwebbed and not affected by web surfaces. Now, these are medium armor, so I can't put them onto Ballista, as I might otherwise consider. But I could put them on to maybe uh, Lei Boing Zell, give her better athletics. Or Karlak, also a fine choice. Let's do that. Blink is one of those spells that has pretty good defensive power, but I just never really use because I don't want to spend my concentration just defending myself when I could be eliminating enemies with it. So, there are lots of things to talk about for this fight. Many ways to approach it. It's a lot of fun. One thing I want to say is a smart thing to do is to blow up that cluster of eggs from up here where they can't notice you doing it. But, part of my challenge is to tackle all configurations of enemies in the hardest possible way, so I can't eliminate any of them up here where it's safe. I've got to fight them in the actual boss battle. So I will do things in the worst way that way. Let me sneak on over there and get into the boss room from that direction, I think. So we'll be fighting a spider queen, two phase spiders, and she can hatch vast hordes of baby spiders. But she herself is really the big threat. Especially with the new legendary action that can do like 40 damage a pop if you do deal with it wrong, apparently. And her ability to give herself two actions per turn later on when she's injured and make herself resistant to damage and having massive initiative. She's... She is a rough first boss. Now, I originally recorded this episode and what's going to be the next one as one video, but it turned out to be way too long, so I'm going to split this one out here, and we can look forward to fighting the Spider Queen Matriarch next time. Thank you for watching, everyone, and a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Frank Maidens, Master Knight DH, Jackie, and Lino, George Grin, Travis, Carlo Andrea 97, Cthulhu's Mum, Gregory, William Wakefield, Danny Hall, Jeffrey Morse, Dylan Wagner, Just Becca, Jack, Austin Livingston, Mishas01, Jacob Marshall, Nubiana, Till Fisher, Latanix, Discord Colossus, Nicholas Schmuck, Kostya Nesterovich, Vol the Great, Daniel Sedajikato, Luke, Frederick Bruin, Goman Blackrock, Dodo King 4, Marcin Bialak, and Techno Waffle. Have a great day, everyone!